Okay, so by looking at this uh, picture, right, you can think uh, what comes to your mind. So we all try to you know, exercise, eat healthy and stay healthy. But there are times that emergency happens. So when that emergency happens, we need medical attention, care by paramedics or you know, A&E doctors and hospital. So when we are under the safe hands, we recover quickly and come back to our routine. Similarly, things like this happens to organizations. So incidents or breaches do happen. And at times they need help to, you know, to respond to those incidents quickly and successfully to bring the business back to normal. And this is how Mandin has started its journey you know, as providing uh, consulting services uh, since early 2000. So Mandin is able to get answers to these urgent business questions quickly and do so in a time of crisis. So when it comes to incident response, uh, Mandin has you know, a wealth of experience like paramedics or emergency doctors from like 995. So uh, I will not go in depth, no, but these are the high level solution offering from Mandian. You can go to Mandian Fire website to find out more information. So that's the introduction about uh, Mandian. And uh, that, okay, so uh, something to look forward at the end of the session. So we have some give, uh, giveaways. So we will have a Q and A. So uh, at, the end of, at the end of the session, uh, three lucky winners can you know, help to get this Mandian cap. I, I hope, I think it will help you in the hot weather in the upcoming months. Okay, so uh, yeah, so uh, Nigel has introduced me. Okay, so uh, let's go to the topic. Uh, when we talk about uh, breach and attack simulation, right? So we, we actually, we, uh, okay, for this uh, presentation, rest of the topic, we refer that as a security validation, okay? So I want to highlight three words for security valid validation, uh, which is identifying false negatives. So what is false negatives? False negative is something we miss, a piece or threat, or piece of an attack that gets into the environment undetected. So how can we identify false negative? So that's what the security validation is doing. It does that by measuring the cybersecurity controls effectiveness. Let's see what, what would be the average dwell time for organization in Asia Pacific. So dwell time, uh, you can think, you know, uh, uh, is, is the amount of time that the prevention fails from the time that intrusion occurs and the time that intrusion is discovered. That's a dwell time example, the, the attacker come in or the hacker come in, tech groups come in, but we don't know they are there. You know. Then after some time we discover they are there. Ah, that's the dwell time. So this is actually measured by uh, Mandian in uh, real incident response engagement and the number also that comes from annual M trends report. So uh, if we can make this number uh, smaller means we are spotting the attacker quickly and we are disrupting the attacker kill chain or the kill chain various process of the attack before the, those bad guys can complete their mission. So their mission could be deploying ransomware on the critical server or steal data or to cause any other form of damage. So security validation helps to transform the environment from reactive to proactive approach. So let's find out the answer. The correct answer is 76 days. That's a median for APEC 12 time. Cybersecurity, actually you think about it now, is, is critical to business. You know, uh, back then IT was a uh, support function and you know, all. Uh, now, now the technology or cybersecurity is, is, is critical, is, you know, it's a business enabler. So it's, uh, it's a critical regardless of any specific industry. So whether it's for the purpose of business continuity, uh, where we need to you know, access our data, or you know, we need to access our uh, lectures, online learning, or working from home, or be it for regulatory compliance. We are talking about maintaining protection of critical data and infrastructure, making sure that we don't you know loss of the top secrets to the competitors. And finally, we are seeing more and more of uh, across all industries, is a demand for rationalization and optimization. 
So back then, the days of you know, unlimited manpower and budgets are long gone. So today, reality is you, you go to any environment, the senior leadership or the board, they are starting to uh, ask, you know, uh, require rationalization. And they will often ask, uh, do we seem to have you know, so many different security technology? How do we make it cost efficient? You know, how, how do we cut costs? So optimization and rationalization will help us to make sure that we are getting the most out of our investments. Organizations continue to make uh, significant security investments. You know? I have been reading some saying 100, 100 billion over, some saying 150 billion, some saying over the next year, 10 years is going to be trillion dollar business. You know? So, but yeah, we are investing uh, a lot. Yet often we see uh, our evidence from uh, be it Singapore or the region or all around the world asking how uh, effective the cybersecurity is. Unlike uh, other essential business unit, you know, such as uh, finance, HR operations, cybersecurity is often difficult to measure in a quantifiable metrics or evidence-based KPIs. On average, if you go to any organization like our, uh, enterprise or a big government uh, data center, IT environment, you will see that around 20 to 50 cybersecurity controls in the organization. Uh, we, we deploy it for the purpose of defense in depth, or compliance or regulatory purposes. Uh, but how effective are they? Let's find out. So security controls often less than 50% effective. And that as measured by Mandian Security Effectiveness Report. This is where Mandian has tested many organizations across many verticals in their production environment using security validation to see how effective they actually were rather than how effective they are assuming they were. Some of the reason we might not be you know, effective, you know, we may not be on the latest version, we might not have the, the engine or the tools which is not enabled, which could be default turned off. We may have configuration error, we may have integration error, et cetera. So there are a lot of reason. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily means that we bought the wrong tool, but often what we see is there is a significant opportunity to gain meaningful improvement and effectiveness once we start measuring and identifying the gap. So what Gartner and uh, uh, MAS is uh, saying, okay, so you can refer to the right-hand side, uh, MAS TRM guide, guideline, so this is for the, the financial sectors like banks and any other people handling uh, financial, they had to uh, obey these uh, guidelines. So I can say back then, you know, 10 years ago, we don't have a privileged access management solution or database activity monitoring solution or EDR and uh, so on. So you, you can actually Google to find out more information, but all these are not really listed, listed as a requirement back then, but now they do. Similarly, security validation is listed as a requirement in the MASTRM for, for FSIs due to the nature of latest threat landscape that is ever evolving. This is a publicly available document. You can, uh, you can download it and uh, read the section 13. So you can see they, they say uh, FI should perform adversarial attack simulation exercise to test and validate the effectiveness of cyber defense. Then at the below 13.5.2, you can see uh, they can design the exercise scenario by using the trait intelligence that is relevant to the uh, environment you know, to, uh, based on the latest uh, TTPs, tactic, techniques and procedure. Yeah. And on the left hand side, you can see there's a uh, Gardner uh, reference. Uh, uh, they, they call it BAS, uh, breach and attack simulation. So, you, you, you can see that there are uh, top use, case, use cases mentioned by the, the Gartner. So uh, it's identifying the secure security posture, validating the security control, complementing the pen testing. So when we talk about pen testing, usually pen testing is uh, yearly activity or we do it before the environment goes live. So it's more like a point in time activity, but what happens after that? So that's where the security validation you know, uh, complements it 
by, by closing this time gap. Then the last one is uh, M&A merger and acquisition. So the security of the environment or in, uh, infrastructure is as good as how the weakest link is. So validation uh, helps to measure the true posture of the security company that we are going to merge and identify areas of improvement and to, to maintain the overall security posture. So Gartner also included the best uh, in its top security and uh, risk management trends of 2021. Okay, so yeah, this is the, the aircraft uh, cockpit picture. Okay, so ever wondered how the aircraft is prepared for the takeoff or for the, for the journey? So what they do, like they normally physically inspect all around the aircraft, they calculate the weight, load distribution, check if all the instruments and panels are working fine, the people, process, you know, everything, so on and so on. So ultimately this is to ensure the safety the safe, safe and comfort of the safety and the comfort of passengers. So to better understand, I can relate this to uh, exactly what the security organization is doing. So it helps to measure organization cybersecurity effectiveness, validate security controls in order for the clients to effectively collect their business. By validating, you know that the clients are effectively managing their, their organization cybersecurity risk. Like the aircraft is inspected for safety, the, the best and security validation is, you know, validating the security control readiness for the defense. Okay, so now we, when we talk about security validation, a lot of time audience get conf confused because every time they talk, talk to about cybersecurity, what they are hearing is about presentation on a security control. This is something like uh, antivirus or firewall or DLP system. And normally these security controls are stacked so that you have protection through defense in that. Unless it's explicitly pointed out, often audience will make an assumption that security validation is yet another security control. Because everything in cybersecurity is all about security controls. Uh, that's not uh, correct. Because security validation is not a security control. It's not trying to catch anything, not trying to detect or block anything. It's not trying to alert or stop the adverse adversaries. What security validation is doing is trying to measure the effectiveness of the security controls, which we already have. Think of it almost like a QA function for how effective the security solutions are. How it works. Okay, so I uh, now I want to give uh, another uh, you know, analogy. So I, I would like to relate to the movie. You no, know, we watch movies, right? The movie has a uh, director uh, and actors. So the actor will act accordingly based on director instructions. And there are different security technologies in the environment. So you go to any organization or any data center, uh, they will have uh, multiple security technologies deployed in their environment. For example, from firewall to IPS to endpoint security controls and so on. on uh, in, in this diagram, if you look at the top, there's a director uh, you, you can take that as a security validation uh, manager. Then on the, the there's a chevron uh, red red color looking is the actors. Okay, so uh, depending on uh, which segment we want to carry out an attack, attack right, the director will instruct the actor. So uh, example, we want to uh, download the malware. Uh, then one actor will uh, act as a source, and another actor will act as a destination. So in this example, you can see the, the red chevron marks are deployed uh, different zones. So from the right, you can see there's an internet zone, cloud zone, then the leftmost, you can see a workstation zone, our business zone, server zone, and so on. So all around the zones that the actors are being deployed. Okay. Uh, so what, what we are going to do, we are going to assume that uh, uh, there's an attack coming from internet zone to all the way to the business zone. Okay. So we, we take that internet zone as a, as a fun, source attacker or function attacker, and there's a function target. The target attacker is a business zone. Okay. So once the attack is launched, it travels through the various security controls. It passes through the firewall, proxy, or IPS, endpoint security control, even until the host level, uh, 
uh, EDR and so on. So once the attack is launched, right, the, direct, the director asks those security controls, hey, from this IP to this IP address at this time, what did you see? Did you see anything? Did you see anything that you passed this telemetry? Did you generate any alert? Did you detect anything? Did you prevent anything? And in that way, we get answers to the questions about how effective are the security controls. Okay, and this is uh, because it's using real attack or real attack components, right? We, we don't need to operate in a way, uh, for example, what is the firewall configuration or what is this uh, endpoint security configuration? And is that configuration is right? We are not uh, inspecting the security controls configuration. So instead, what we are doing is we are passing the attack through the security controls and asking the question, did the attack get through? And because we operate that way, we don't need knowledge of whether configuration is right or wrong. Because we don't need that knowledge, right? The security validation or the breach and attack simulation can work with any security controls. Okay, so let's take an example of what this looks like. I will, for, for this one, I will just focus on the graph on the left hand side. Let's say this is an organization who said we want to be 70% effectiveness. That's the dash white line you will see there on the left hand side. So now you might be saying, hey, 70%, uh, isn't it a bit low? Or is it the organization try to lowballing it? But, but actually remember that once organization, they start measuring, they are well below 70%, often below 50%. So this organization starting to, to closer to 20% effective. Uh, that's okay. It doesn't mean that they have bought the wrong solution, just means that things, things need to be tuned. And over the course of October and November, they did that tuning and they measured a quantitative improvement in their security effectiveness. By the start of December, they passed the 70% and went into the green. And sometime passed by mid-December, something changed. And there was a drop in security effectiveness and they went back into the red. And they noticed it quickly because the security validation, the attack simulation was running continuously so that they can notice this drop quickly. So what happened in this organization, uh, there was a network engineer who was upgrading the switch. And on that switch, there was a span port. And that span port was feeding the traffic to one of the security controls. And when that switch was upgraded, the span traffic broke. And the security control wasn't receiving the traffic it needed to receive in order to catch this type of threat. So now the security control is functioning perfectly. It has the right configuration, had all the engine turned on, it is running on the latest version, but it, but it wasn't receiving the traffic it needed. And a lot of time issues like this become silent failures. And over a time, those silent failures accumulate and that accumulation leads you to a state where once you start measuring, we are at 20% because so many silent failures have accumulated over the time. Well, this case is very different because they were running the security validation. It wasn't a silent failure, they noticed a drop they said, why, why did we have this drop? The security engineering team investigated it, found the problem, found the root cause was with the switch. They fixed that spanning configuration and the traffic started flowing properly into the security control and they went back up to the green. So this is an example of how security validation help, can help not only to improve, but show measured improvement and also to keep the environment safe over the time. Okay, so I have, I think I have after after a long day of you know uh, you guys studying and listening, understand you'll be tired, maybe wanting to go dinner or something. So let me quickly show you the demo and uh, we can start to you know uh, go to the the next next part. Okay, let me pass this. Okay, uh, Nigel, are you able to see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, can. Okay, thank you, great. Okay, so this is the threat intelligence, okay? So what, what I was talking, yes, uh, we need to validate the, you know, uh, the environment for security control effectiveness, but then how, how do we begin, you know? Uh, if you talk about any companies, you know, any organization, uh, be the government or enterprise, there, there are lots of threats out there, a lot of vulnerabilities out there. So we need to know uh, who is targeting us, you know? So for example, 
uh, I think the, the region, uh, who, who is targeting Singapore? And who, who is the threat actor, for example, targeting this particular uh, industry or vertical? Then, then we need to, from there, we need to identify what are the tactic techniques and procedure they are using? What are the, the malware they are using? So that we can try to you know, uh, take the relevant uh, information and validate against our environment. So this is the threat intelligence dashboard. So what I'm going to show you is, you know, I'm going to show you the threat actors that is targeting, for example, education sector in the you know, education sector. And I'm going to choose the region they are targeting Singapore. So let's see what are the threat actors currently actively targeting the Singapore region. So you can see there are various threat actors uh, from uh, different places identified and uh, uh, do more information about about them what are they doing you know? okay so so for example okay let, let me go to a specific example so these are the three actors we found out that targeting education and singapore okay so let's let's say we take a look fin 12 okay so fin 12 is financially motivated threat group okay so uh, what they are doing so they are you know launching the ransomware attacks uh, then they they also rely on multiple try actors to, to complete their mission. So you can see the timeline where they, they have started to be active. And previously, all these are the different uh, name given to the threat actors group, and they, they merged to, to become this FIN12. Okay? So these are the industries currently they are targeting, and, and this is their purpose. And what are the associated malware they are using? And you can see the, the country and region they are targeting. So yeah, so now we know, okay, there's uh, intelligence we have. Uh, there's a, this is a group that targeting this region and how do we you know, validate? So we can uh, find, we can go to more details about this FIN12. Then we just click validation here. So you can see that uh, these, these are the, the action, the, the TTPs are tied to this particular uh, the threat group and what we can do we can try to okay let's say if this is targeting me you know i want to see my environment how this security control can block this you know or can prevent this uh threat group or their attack so so we just click, simply click validate it will bring to the breach and attack simulation security validation platform okay so you can see all these uh actions will be uh, filtered based on the particular threat group and threat actor. Here you can see. So we, we will just uh, further click from here. Then we just uh, run it. Then this will just run all this, all the TTPs, uh, the malware they are using. Then it will come out as a report that uh, to, to show that, okay, uh, uh, how good the security control. I mean, where uh, whether are they detecting and preventing? So you can see this. There's a pass and failure. There's a different ratio. How many percent pass? How many percent fail? So actually, this is a demo environment. I didn't particularly run the uh, tech threat actor. So I'm just showing an example. So you can see uh, how many actions prevented, or how many actions detected. Then you can also see what are the security technologies uh, involved here. Which which are the security technologies uh, uh, did prevent, did detect, or which which are the, or which are the thing that missed. So we can go and uh, find out more details, for example, which are the things triggered even, or which are the things alerted. So for example, when we are validating the environment, right? If there is, uh, if, if there is a uh, attack, it's missed, but then it didn't trigger any event, any alert. So this is an area we can go and uh, fine tune if why this is you know, missed. What, what can I do to make it to detect or prevent then how can I configure to alert? Okay, so next time when uh, this threat actor is trying to uh, get into this environment, right? Then we are alerted because if the alert is not generated, right? The chance of the analyst taking a taking a look at the uh, sim or or uh, any uh, event management platform uh, is, is uh, almost slim slim to none. So so we need the alert to be triggered as well. So all, all these or an example that how the validation can be used and to fine tune the security controls we have, okay? So let me switch back to the 
presentation slide. Okay, so uh, some of the things I want to highlight as a, as a security validation key takeaway, uh, looking through the attacker lens. So back then, right, back then maybe more than 10 years or 15 years back, when we want to do some testing, uh, uh, normally uh, what oh, the developer or any team, they will go to IT, then they will provision uh, servers, they rack it, they configure it, and uh, give it to the person who requested it. So this way they can keep track the inventory and put the security controls on it, uh, uh, track it, etc. so on. But today, it, 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 the, the landscape is different. We can know that there's a cloud, there's a virtualization, uh, the, there's a tablet, laptops, so, so many different avenues. So we, we can, for example, we can just go to cloud and provision it. The IDT may not even aware of it. So we can you know we are uh, some, some of we are working from home. We are using different devices to connect. So all this made the attack surface larger. So we don't exactly know what we have in our environment. So it's important to view our environment to the eyes of an attacker. In that way, we can quickly identify the issue and improve the security posture. Next, we can see uh, we can uh, we. We, we don't have you know, time or resources, but re remember when, uh, you know, as long as the things are connected to the internet, right, the attack is possible. So we could take the proactive appro approach to attack ourselves before others do. So example, we can ask questions. Uh, by doing so, we can ask questions, how prepared are we? Have we detected any of uh, any breaches? Uh, when was it? How was the containment and recovery? Did the business resume quickly and confidently? Are, are we well prepared to handle the next one? So attacks will happen is just uh, no more if, but it, when you will happen, you can refer to the picture on the uh, right-hand side. Uh, this is uh, last year, Minister Josephine Chiu, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the article published in the Straits Times, changed our strategy for cyber response from preventing breaches to as assume breaches. Okay. Yeah, so uh, these, these are key takeaways I want to, uh, uh, share with you before I move to a uh, quiz uh, Q&A, okay. Okay, yeah, so um, Nigel, these are the questions uh, I'm going to ask, so need your help to uh, take note who will be uh, answering it, okay. So, okay. yeah, yeah, so uh, I'll be asking three questions, so whoever respond to the question answer, in the chat, right? Then they will get the, the median cap, which I highlighted earlier. Okay, so this is a question one. How long an average organization in the APAC region to, to notice a successful cyber intrusion? For example, the 12th time. You can submit your responses. So Nigel, let me know if you, know, you got on the first one, then you can identify who is it. Yeah, uh, someone respond. Responded with D. So I, I remember that that's the answer. So, I, so the first winner is Jian Hao. Okay, yeah, the answer is D. So you just take note who is the winner, okay? Okay. All right, great. Okay, let's move on to the next question. How many security controls typically found in an organization? Uh, you can see the different number, 5 to 15. We've got, we've got people with B, C, and D. Or oh, we got people C, B, C, and D. Also, oh, sorry, only B and C. Ah, okay, okay. So, uh, if got enough response there, I will reveal the answer. Okay, so the correct answer is B. So estimated we have about twenty to fifty. Okay, so Nigel, you have identified the the person who answered correctly. Yes. So winner one is Tian Hao. Winner two is Xin Zhen. All right, great. Let's move to the next question. What is the platform that helps to measure, validate the effectiveness of security control? A, B, C, D. So we've got two people saying it's A. A, great. So who, who answer first then? Yeah. Okay, so Shu Qin uh, is our third winner. All right, great. So yeah, that's, that's about my questions. 
So let's open the floor for any any question. Do we have so far, Nigel, so that I can clarify it? Uh, currently, no questions in the chat. Uh, okay. Mm, yeah. So I can can see how Sinsen and Su Qin pass me your uh, NUS email. Yes. Yeah, so sorry about that. Uh, it will be needed to distribute the the prizes. So, but uh, I actually have one question. Yeah. So go so, ahead. Uh, is it accurate to say that prediction attack simulation is actually very similar to pen testing? Okay, that's a good question. So pen testing, like I, I, I like I mentioned earlier. Uh, pen testing more like a manual effort, you know, or it's, it's more, it's a point in time activity. We need people to conduct the pen test at that point of time. And uh, usually the scope is also uh, limited. Okay. And we may not be able to continuously monitor it, for example, after the pen testing completed, right? Then uh, you can remember two months back, uh, there was a lot of 4G attack, uh, you know, early. So uh, then the question is, are we uh, no vulnerable to this log 4 j uh, exploit? How do we know? So let's say if our pen test just finished, right, we, we may not have the answer. So uh, comparing that with uh, PASS and the security validation, right, which can run continuously in the environment and find out if you are vulnerable uh, against the latest threat or evolving threat. So we can autom automatically monitor it. So that's the difference between the pen testing and the security validation. So but we, we cannot totally replace the pen testing, uh, but what security validation is doing is complementing the pen testing. Mm, okay, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type in the chat or can, can I mute also? Tell them is most welcome. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. I have a question. Sure. For attack simulation, do we, do we normally do it on uh, the production server or on the, another different test environment? Okay, so your question is where we need to do it, is it? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the recommended is uh, actually we should uh, test it in a holistic manner, for example, across the cyber kill chain. No? If you talk about um, how, the, how the attack comes, right? usually I uh, come from the reconnaissance stage, then you move, uh, then they try to uh, you know, laterally move, execute the malware, then various stages, right? So uh, if, we, if we limit ourselves to the UAT environment, right, we don't know how our production controls uh, the effectiveness, whether can they stop the attack? So when we start, we can start with the UAT, then we should move to the production and we test as a you know, holistic uh, for the en entire environment. Oh, okay, thanks. No worries, thank you. Any other questions you have guys? Okay, so if no other further questions, I, uh, so let me give back your time and uh, thank you for this. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me opportunity to, to share with you guys. Thanks, Nigel, and thanks.